to worship at St. Mary by the Sea this morning. Today we begin Advent, and our overarching theme for our Advent journey is The Weary World Rejoices. Now you might recognise this phrase from the well-known carol, O Holy Night. This theme was inspired by the carol, but also by the events of the last few years. There is so much weariness. Weariness that stems from the pandemic, lockdowns and change, and weariness that stems from the cost of living crisis and financial stress. Weariness that comes from illness or ageing, or change that makes life harder than it used to be. Where is weariness that seeps into our soul, stopping us from experiencing the fullness of joy? This season, we're acknowledging that joy can exist alongside and within our other emotions. If we look hard enough, we can see that joy can be found, and this brings about hope. Hope that maybe at some point our weariness will ease, and we'll see even more joy. In our Gospel reading today, we have Zachariah being told that he and his wife were going to have a child, John, who would prepare the way for the people. So this week, we prepare ourselves and our hearts, and we do this by acknowledging our weariness. This week, we're taking off the fancy clothes and the makeup we put on our face to hide the weariness. And we let our face see the sun and feel the warmth. Our weariness, when not spoken of, stops us from finding joy and hope. In God's house, we can be joyful. We can be grateful. We can be hopeful. In God's house, we can be weary. We can be anxious. We can be grieving. In God's house, we can be honest inspired or tired, delighted or doubtful, connected or curious, and everything in between. This is God's house. You are welcome exactly as you are. Let us worship our loving God. Friends, in 
today's scripture passage, a man named Zechariah is given good news from God, and his response to ask is, how can this be? Have any of you felt that way when receiving good news? It can be hard to receive good news when we don't expect it. It can be hard to accept God's grace and God's love when we think we don't deserve it. But friends, scripture tells us over and over again of a loving, generous and gracious God. So may we come to the prayer of confession today, not with fear, but with an awe so deep that we ask ourselves, how can this be? Let us pray. Gracious God, we are weary for weary bodies that ache and cry out. We pray. Forgive us for pushing ourselves too hard. Remind us that we deserve Sabbath rest. For weary minds that feel overwhelmed and saturated with news, we pray. Forgive us for creating so many distractions. Remind us that in the quiet, we can hear you. For the weary edges of our faith that struggle to hold on to hope, forgive us. Remind us of Zachariah and Elizabeth. Remind us that your good news knows no bounds. Amen. Family of faith, no matter how many times we wear ourselves thin, no matter how many times we lose ourselves to distractions, no matter how many times we ask ourselves, how can this be? God's love keeps showing up for us, so say this with me. We are loved, we are claimed, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Loving God, the source of our joy, as we turn our hearts towards your word, we ask that you would soften us, soften the calluses on our hearts, weave yourself in between the cracks in our spirits, and plant hope where there is room. And as you do this, like flowers toward the sun, we will turn ourselves towards you, eager to hear a word so good that we cannot help but ask ourselves, how can this be? With openness and gratitude we pray. Amen. Psalm 80. Ship of Israel, you lead the descendants of Joseph and you sit on your throne above the winged creatures. Listen to our prayer and let your light shine for the tribes of Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh. Save us by your power. O God, make us strong again. Smile on us and save us. Lord God all-powerful, how much longer will the prayers of your people make you angry? You gave us tears for food and you made us drink them by the bowlful. Because of you, our enemies who live nearby laugh and joke about us. Our God, make us strong again. Smile on us and save us. But help the one who sits at your right side, the one you raised, to be your very own. Then we will never turn away. Put new life into us and we will worship you. Lord God, all powerful, make us strong again. Smile on us and save us. Lyle Gwynne Garrity has done a painting called Make Your Face Smile and it's an acrylic painting on canvas along with digital drawing and it's based on Psalm 80 we've just heard. Lyle says this of her painting and of the scripture. For this Advent series I created a collection of paintings inspired by the Hubble telescope, images of the cosmos. The telescope renderings invite you to peer into worlds unknown. The beauty of it all is a balm for the weary. When you gaze upon the colours of the cosmos, how can you keep but from rejoicing? Inspired by the luminescent textures of the nebula and star clusters, I painted washes of vibrant colours and metallic gold amidst a black drop of beautiful blackness. 
these paintings have become the backgrounds for each of my digital drawings in this series. The day I began working on this image, another mass shooting terrorised our country. This time it happened at a church preschool. One of the children slain was the pastor's daughter. By the time you read this, there will have been more shootings. More unnecessary and completely preventable deaths. The weight of that prediction makes every bone in my body weary beyond repair. As I read and reread Psalm 80 on that day of mourning, I remembered that politeness is not the language of the weary. The psalmist supplied me with the words I wanted to pray, the words I wanted to scream. Wake up your power, God. Save us. How long? Then I began to draw. What emerged was a face shining from the cosmos. I imagined God as Holy Mother or Holy Parent weeping for her creation. I imagined the parents weeping for their children who were so suddenly and brutally taken from them. The mere thought of their grief knocks the wind out of me. As I completed the image, I added a flock of doves flying out from the void into which God's tears fall. The doves represent the spirit let loose in our world, flapping their wings into every desperate corner. I added them not as a statement, but as a plea. Please God, make your face shine so we might be saved. Luke 1 Many people have tried to tell the story of what God has done among us. They wrote what we had been told by the ones who were there in the beginning and saw what happened. So I made a careful study of everything and then decided to write and tell you exactly what took place. Honourable Theophilus, I have done this to let you know the truth about what you have heard. When Herod was king of Judea, there was a priest by the name of Zechariah from the priestly group of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was from the family of Aaron. Both of them were good people and pleased the Lord God by obeying all that he had commanded. But they did not have children. Elizabeth could not have any, and both Zechariah and Elizabeth were already old. One day Zechariah's group of priests were on duty and he was serving God as a priest. According to the customs of the priests, he had been chosen to go into the Lord's temple that day and to burn incense while the people stood outside praying. All at once an angel from the Lord appeared to Zechariah at the right side of the altar. Zechariah was confused and afraid when he saw the angel, but the angel told him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayers. Your wife Elizabeth will have a son, and you must name him John. His birth will make you very happy, and many people will be glad. Your son will be a great servant of the Lord. He must never drink wine or beer, and the power of the Holy Spirit will be with him from the time he is born. John will lead many people in Israel to turn back to the Lord their God. He will go ahead of the Lord with the same power and spirit that Elijah had. And because of John, parents will be more thoughtful of their children, and people who now disobey God will begin to think as they ought to. This is how John will get the people ready for the Lord. Zachariah said to the angel, How will I know this is going to happen? My wife and I are both very old. The angel answered, I am Gabriel, God's servant, and I was sent to tell you this good news. You have not believed what I have said, so you will not be able to say a thing until all of this happens, but everything will take place when it is supposed to. The crowd was waiting for Zachariah and kept wondering, why he was staying in the temple so long. When he did come out, he could not speak, and they knew he had seen a vision. He motioned to them with his hands, but did not say a thing. When Zechariah's time of service in the temple was over, he went home. Lauren Wright Pittman has painted the Annunciation to Zechariah. She's done it using acrylic and ink 
on a wood panel, and it's inspired by Lake One we've just heard. Lauren says this, Zachariah is dressed in a breast piece, an ephod, robe, checkered tunic, turban and sash, just as the book of Exodus specifies. In my painting, gold, blue, purple and crimson yarns are woven together and bejeweled with engraved stones, which bear the names of the sons of Israel. From Exodus 28. Zechariah stands in the holy palace, wearing the most meticulous of garments. Does he expect to encounter the divine? Or is he just going through the motions, lighting the incense, as an all too familiar scent fills the air? After all these years of fulfilling priestly duties, and living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. Luke 1 and 6. Zachariah and his wife are still childless. Regardless of their desire for children, in their culture and context, childlessness bore the implication of God's contempt. I ruminated on this image. A wary priest, wrapped in layered fabrics, colours, symbols, textures, and rare stones that proclaim God's providence and power. The contrast is not lost on me. I often try to neglect my weariness by putting on a veneer of unwavering trust in God, while feeling like I may suddenly unravel into a pile of beautifully curated threads, stones and gold accessories. In this image, I decided to depict the angel as smoke from the altar of incense. Zachariah has one hand over his mouth in fear and disbelief, while his other hand cradles the notion, not yet hope, of his son's existence. Do you bind up your weariness in a neat and tidy bow? Put your head down and pro project okayness like me? What would it look like to acknowledge our we weariness? quit powering through, and open ourselves up to what God might have in store for us. Perhaps we'll meet an angel. We have now an affirmation of faith you may wish to join in with me. We believe in a God who hears our prayers, who knows the shape and form of our weariness. We believe in a God who wants joy and delight for us, not just survival and existence. We believe in a God who looks ahead, who is not done dreaming for the world, a God who sends hope in the form of people and change, movements and spirit. And so we return to this space, we bring our joy and our weariness, like the two sides of the same coin. And we trust that God is already at work. Yes, we believe in a God who hears our prayers. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Chanting
Gracious God, you carry us through our days. You know every word on our tongue, every hair on our head. You know the dreams in our hearts and the weight of our bones. You also know the weariness we bring with us into the morning and into the space. So with honesty we come before you, both with hearts full of gratitude and with prayer requests on our lips. First, Holy God, we thank you for the gifts of this life that give energy. For birthday candles and sunrises, for handwritten cards and jobs that we are passionate about. For stories that can make us laugh until we cry, and for friends that feel like family. For all these gifts, we thank you. In addition to these prayers of gratitude, loving God, we also bring before you the things that weigh heavy on our hearts, for gun violence, for family and friends in chemotherapy and radiation, for seasons of transition and grief that won't let us go. We ask for your attention. We ask for your love and care. Take this yoke from us, relieve some of the burden on our backs, and wrap your arms around some of the places where we feel most tender. And as we enter into this new Advent season, a season marked with joy, hope and light, we ask that you would remind us that our full humanity is welcome here. There is room for both joy and grief. There is room for weariness and awe. There is room for faith and doubt. For nothing is too big or too far gone from your love to reach it. So with hope in our hearts, unite our voices once more to pray the words that your Son taught us, praying together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And a blessing. Family of faith, as you leave this place, you go into a weary world, so speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection, Hold on to hope, and remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved, so go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen.